Hi everybody, welcome back to Let's Have Tea. For those of you who don't know, my name is Demi and Let's Have Tea is my channel about everything. So I share my random thoughts here, but I promise you they are interesting. So you should subscribe, share with your friends, like, and please leave a comment. Today's video is a response to a comment I got on a video I posted a couple of weeks ago. So two weeks ago, I posted a video about global declining birth rates and I put it out there as a question asking people what they think governments should do to address global declining birth rates. A lot of you comments and one of them really caught my eye because I thought it was interesting. I'm not going to post it here because I don't want it to seem as though I am bashing the person who posted this comment. Um, if you want to read it, you can go to that video and read it. But please, I'm not asking for anybody to be bashed because I genuinely think that this is how this person views the world. This person, in response to my video, said that the reason global birth rates are declining is because feminism has given women all of this freedom and they can go out there and participate in the workforce. And because they are participating in the workforce, they are being exploited by the government. And in the process, they're sort of neglecting family life. And because they have all of these freedoms, men don't want to marry them. Um, not that the women don't want to get married, but men don't want to marry them. And there's all this like drama around like women have a holy, I believe it was called a holy responsibility to raise families. And for some reason, I also got a jab in that comment because this person basically said feminists like you or women like you would not speak up, um, would not admit, they said, to the failures of feminism. And I was like, I, I, I was just, I was just sharing facts about global declining birth rates and like government policy. But if you're going to talk about that, let's talk about it. I am happy to do so. So this video is about that. Let's talk about the real reason why women might not be having more children. And this time around, I'm speaking more from the perspective of women as opposed to just taking an overview of a policy situation. One of the things that the comment said was that female participation in the workforce is to blame for why there are less children, because women are less amenable to the idea of raising a family, even though it is their responsibility. Needless to state that raising a family is a two person job. And the idea that the man goes out, does the grunt work, brings home the money um, and the woman is at home caring for the family, blah, 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 is, is a nice one. But it also just speaks of a society that's already problematic. And I will get into that in a bit when I start to talk about the real issues. I want to start us off with a little bit of history about female labor participation. There seems to be this idea in people's heads that women didn't work until feminism became a thing. That women could not participate in the workforce at all across the world. It is true that women couldn't work in a lot of professions. They couldn't be doctors, they couldn't be lawyers, they couldn't be engineers. There were so many things that women were not allowed to study for. But does that mean that women did not work? Because when you go into some African countries, for example, historically, a lot of the women were traders and they are still traders. And except we're saying that is not work, that is work. Those women... <coughs> If you go into some African countries, for example, a lot of the women come from a lineage of other women who have always been traders. Some of them were farmers. They owned land, they worked on the soil with their families, and they sold their wares in the market. It was an informal economy, but it was work. So you might say that women didn't participate in certain kinds of work, but if you ask me, being a farmer is much more work than being an engineer today. So there are women in those places who worked and it was well. If you go into some African countries, for example, a lot of the women come from a lineage of other women who have always been traders. Some of them were farmers. They owned land, they worked on the soil with their families and they sold their wares in the market. It was an informal economy, but it was work. So you might say that women didn't participate in certain kinds of work, but if you ask me, being a farmer is much more work than being an engineer today. So there are women in those places who worked and it was well accepted that these women had some sort of self-determination. They had access to their own money and some of them were wealthier than their husbands. I know that's hard to believe, but it is true. But let's look at the Western countries where there's this 
theory that yeah women didn't work until feminism opened the way does that apply to every woman because if you think about it and you start to look at it if you segregate it by race there were women who had to work because they didn't have the liberty to not do so they were forced into work they worked for wages they worked to support their families their husbands were in low wage work so everybody worked so this sense of like if we could just go back a little bit to the time when women didn't have to do all of this then the world would be fine is an interesting one because when you think of the fact that those women worked but they also raised children i'm not saying they raised perfect children that let's get that right they some of them raised some disturbed children not saying they raised perfect children but they had children they raised those children and there was no discussion around oh my goodness what are we going to do because women are just not giving birth that didn't happen so how is it then that when women were working a lot harder outside of the home if i might add because for those women in the west who were forced into labor they were not working with their families some of them were gone for months on end in fact they came back home saw their kids and then they were gone again same happens in south africa when apartheid was on where there were women who worked outside of their family they had children but they worked with families and raised other people's kids those women still had children is my point so tying the idea of oh women working is the reason why we have a global decline in birth rate is not true and it is definitely not true across the world it might be true in some places but what i found when i was looking at data was that in 1895 there was a 40 percent female participation in the workforce in Germany 1895 in 1925 the percentage was 45 percent so we cannot say that women were not working at any point um, the world is unstable now because women are working that's not true women have a right and this I'm stating because it seems as though people are fantasizing about going back to a time where they hold all the power um, and women are just like people who relax at home and have kids and raise those kids and i'm not saying those are bad things please they are not bad things if a woman has chosen to do that and she and her partner are happy with it that is great but you cannot deride the women who do not choose that because like every man every woman has a right to self-determination every woman has the right to want to affect the world and for some people, affecting the world is affecting their kids. In other words, raising their kids and instilling them with values. That doesn't necessarily mean it's enough for every woman out there. And I can't believe I have to say this because I've said this before to a couple of people, but that was years ago. Women are not prototypes of each other. Like we're not, we're not like coming off a factory line where we've been built with specific features. And so if you just click this button, this is what will happen. I'm saying that because while childbearing being a homemaker is fulfilling for some women for other women it is not and that needs to be respected because women are different if we rolled back the world if someone woke up tomorrow and they said let's roll things back you know like you know those people we are enslaved i feel like the world was more stable then so let's sort of like mm, roll it back a little bit would everybody be okay with this like would men be okay with this the answer is probably no so if we are not okay with that happening let's not stretch an idea that might lead to us even discussing things like that let's not stretch a belief that is fictitious into that because like i said historically women have always worked there are other issues as to why the global birth rate is declining and i'll speak on them in a little bit the other reason why it is important that we debunk this idea that women should simply be happy to fulfill their holy responsibility of raising the family is because of economic abuse we often talk again this is another fictitious thing that has been made up often talk about the idea that women are like women were homemakers as something that was delightful for those women what we fail to see the ugly side of it is that a lot of those women did not have any they don't they didn't have any access to anything 
like they didn't have access to any resources a lot of them were domestically and economically abused which meant that they were treated like kids they could not take money and just like spend it on something that they thought was necessary or something that they needed they wanted to do their hair they had to go to their husbands when do their nails had to go to their husbands it's a level of dependency that i would say gave men a sense of purpose because it's like you've adopted a child if we're being honest but for women who had to do it and had to deal with partners who were not cooperative or didn't even like them anymore it was a different experience and if that's your situation now i'm not saying it's a bad thing because there are women who are in that situation but they are with very caring loving partners who would do anything for them it all boils down to a personal perspective on what you want and how your life is playing out and who you are with so there is no way to say for sure that if we rolled things back everybody would be happy because that's not the case having said that what are the real issues like why are women not having more children i would say that there is and i said this in the last video the one i did two weeks ago that there's a big value shift in what's important to people there are more single women i believe like people are getting married much later and obviously the longer it takes i'm not going to say the longer you put it off because when you say you put it off people assume that oh people just don't want to get married i know a lot of people who want to get married but just haven't met the right person and so they just keep living their lives you can't tell them not to live their lives but there is a different value shift where people are now considering do i want to have kids and how does it impact me and this is where i want us to dwell why would people feel the need to ask that question if we lived in a society that was supportive of women having children why would anybody want to ask do i want kids if we lived in a society where having kids was celebrated because come to think of it if you are a woman for example in america and you had kids you don't have any federally mandated maternity leave. It's totally up to your employer to provide you with that, of which they could say, no, get back in here in two weeks. So it doesn't matter that you've got postpartum depression, that your body has just gone through a really traumatic experience, which I know many people would rather describe as beautiful and fulfilling and the best thing. But the married friends I've had who have had kids are like, I, I could have done without that. So your body's just gone through that, but there is nothing that supports you resting. And in some cases, even when you get that time to rest, it is unpaid. So everybody's like, well, you're not here, so we're not going to pay you. So your family falls on one income, which in today's world, if we're being honest and in fairness to the person who posted this comment, they mentioned it, is insufficient to support a family let's be honest like except you're married to somebody who's making like hundreds of thousands you need a double income family so there is no support for women in some countries now they're like yeah we have a maternity leave and it's paid up until a certain point and then it's not paid of which then you ask if you're a single parent say you've decided on your own as a single woman to have a kid who's supposed to look after you on the months when this thing's not getting paid because sometimes you're not getting paid at all. Like sometimes they're like beyond this month, we're not paying you. We just pay you for six months. And any time you take after that is your business. So what are you supposed to do there? We don't live in a society that is supportive of women having children. And I think that is something we need to think about. I know that now there is like paternity leave and there's their generous maternity leave um, packages in some countries, especially in Europe, in the UK, in Canada, which are all good things. In some countries like Nigeria, I think maternity leave is only three months, but that hasn't stopped Nigerian women, by the way. Like, have you seen the birth rate? So just saying that the idea of kids versus like labor first participation is not a thing, because one thing about Nigerian women, they will start a business, they will run a business and they will be successful at it. So it's not the case. But there's also this thing that I think has led to a value shift. So back in the day when I was growing up, there was a very big discussion around the biological clock and the idea that women were running out of time once they hit 30. And um, for that reason, once a woman hits 30, she becomes less desirable because men just automatically view her as desperate. 
I recently read The Status Game by Will Store, and this might be a bit of a stretch, but I, I just want to, I want to put the idea out there and hear what you think. Women were painted as these marriage-hungry, children-hungry people who were chasing after men to ensure that they did the did, achieved the goal before they ran out of time. What happens when you are painted in that way and you cannot achieve the goal in the set time? Because the ideal time they used to say was that women had to have all their kids before 30. And if they didn't have them, they failed in life, they're old cargo, they're not a spring chicken. The manager actually said to me that to me, by the way, he asked me my age just when I was finishing my PhD. And I said, oh, I've just turned 30. And he was like, oh, so you're not a spring chicken. I, I didn't know what to say to that. I was just like, I guess not. But anyway, this sense of like women are hungry and they have to meet a deadline when women meet that deadline and they haven't achieved those goals what are they going to do some of them might just drop out of playing the game and decide to take on a different stance and that's what will store discusses in the status game where if you fail at a certain game and i use the word fail very loosely here you are going to either stop playing the game or you change the rules of the game and it seems as though that's what women are doing for a long time, women were painted as these people who are just like after men for this, and men had a lot of power. But what research has shown recently is that men want more kids, or men want kids more than women do, which is not a surprise because for women, kids will always work. There was this belief also that kids belonged with women. They were not a man's thing. And this was very prevalent in Nigeria when I was growing up, where there were many men who would be like, yeah, I'm helping her with the kid. They didn't see it as I'm raising our kid. And so it became a thing where a child is a woman's burden. And if a child does well, then the father takes credit. But if a child does badly, then the mother gets credit for it. So this idea of like women are chasing after this and blah, blah, blah obviously led some women to be like, okay, you know what, I don't even want to do that because it led to a lot of disrespect. Dating was very lopsided. Women sort of like, it seems as though women didn't have a choice but to go with whatever was available once the deadline was closer. So maybe many women dropped out and said, I actually don't have to do this. So just thinking about the fact that that could have played a role, I don't know for sure. But the biggest thing I would say is one of the reasons why women are not having kids is that there is a lack of community support in a lot of countries. I think back to countries where community is everything, where parents are with their kids, like when they get really old, they go and live with their kids, they don't go and live elsewhere, being cared to by a stranger and getting visits from their kids. That's a very lonely life, by the way. But having the sense of like, they could be with their kids and their grandkids, and even when their kids were away at work, the parents could watch the kids, it seems that doesn't exist in some cultures. And I was very shook to discover that that might not even exist in the Western world. This is the one place where I hear people saying things like, oh, I can't get childcare. Um, and if I'm going to get my in-laws to help me, I have to ask them like two days before, because obviously they live in their own house. It's understandable. I'm not bashing the culture, but I'm just saying like for a lot of people, when they look at it, and think about the fact that, okay, I'm in a place where, for example, I can't drop my kids off with my parents. I can't um, do anything else because I have to be with them all the time because there's no other support. There are no friends to help me. The neighbors will not pick my kids up from school because we don't have that kind of relationship. That breakdown of community is the actual problem, or at least in my mind, one of the biggest problems. Because when you don't have community and you have something as arduous as raising a child to do by yourself, you are in trouble. It's not easy. It's not impossible, but it's also not easy. So you find that a lot of women weigh the benefits versus the cons, if we want to call it that. They ask themselves, if I were to have a kid today, do I have a partner who can support me? For some women, that answer is no. For some, that's yes. For those who say yes, and they're like, yes, let's do it. Let's have a kid because I know that regardless of what happens, this person is here and they will support me. But even then, there are a lot of women who have a fear of the possibility that this person might also just up and leave. And it's not the first time we've heard of women being abandoned while they're pregnant. 
it's not the first time we've heard of women thinking oh we're riding off into the sunset only for them to end up in the gutter while someone else rides off into the sunset it is a whole complex thing the whole point of this is to say that we cannot fantasize about a time when women simply lived quietly because i don't think that's going to happen i don't think we're ever going to get that role back to a world where women did not participate in the labor force because that's that wasn't generally true anyway um, but the idea that they just sit quietly they would accept economic abuse they would accept domestic abuse and just fulfill their holy responsibility of pumping out kids i don't think we're ever going to get that it's giving the handmaiden or the handmaidens and I, I don't think anybody wants that world what i will say that we can work on is building better communities building commu building communities of trust building communities of support, understanding how women need to be supported in order for them to be able to do this and celebrating childbirth for what it is because it's not a little thing. People talk about, you get all these very popular people like Jordan Peterson who's like, oh, bearing children is the most fulfilling thing a woman will ever do in her life. And my question is like, have you done it? How do you know it's the most fulfilling thing? Is this what all the women are telling you? Or is that your perspective when you are sitting on the outside of this woman's body, outside of her experiences and watching her with her kids for a very brief period of time before you get to go and go do your research and do your work and do the things that fulfill you? Not every woman is fulfilled by childbirth. So the idea that, oh, if women do this, then they will feel more fulfilled is not necessarily true. For some women, there's a hunger in the belly that they want to do something else. I'm not saying more or less, they just want to do something else. So we should have this sense, this, should I say, a recalibration. First of all, of what we believe women used to be back in the day. We should disabuse ourselves of the notion that childbearing and female participation in the workforce are like two contrasting things because that's not the case. If women participate in the workforce and they had a lot of support, it would not impact childbearing. The problem is we have a workforce that doesn't support women. We have societies that don't support women. We have societies that even, should I say, look down on women for having kids. I mean, it wasn't odd, it's, or it's not odd even till now, for women to go off on the so-called maternity leave that they get, only to come back and learn that they've been made redundant. Now, after they've been made redundant, if they try to get new work, there's this thing of, there's a gap on your CV. Can you explain that to us? And are you planning to have more kids? I've had interviews where I was asked, do you have a child? Are you planning to have a child in the next year? If we had a society that was supportive of childbearing, those would not be considerations. Everybody would just be ready to celebrate it for what it is. But since we are not celebrating it, we should question why. Rather than thinking, we need to relegate women back to some historical fiction that oh they never did anything that was for privileged women not every woman had that so just putting that out there and thank you again to the person who posted this comment because i found it very insightful please don't take this as something that's bashing your comment i just thought to share my perspective on this and i would be keen to hear what others think as well that's the end of this video goodbye